Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reduce some paint using your reducer and also what PSI to set your pressure at so that you get the perfect and optimal performance. So let's get into it right now. So if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I'm pretty much used Trident airbrush colors for the majority of my artwork. I also use Createx illustration colors for certain projects. Now, the uh, thinning tips that I'm going to give you today are going to focus on those products. I'm not going to show you the Createx because I use the same ratios for that brand of paint, but I am going to show you how I mix up my Trident paint. Now, if you have a different brand, that's fine. Um, you can just apply these methods to that brand, just adjust as necessary. So, so I'll go into more details of what things you can adjust depending on um, you know, whether it's too thin or too thick as the video progresses. So depending on what brand um, of paint you're using, they will have their own reducers. Uh, some may even tell you to mix with water, but I don't recommend that. Uh, the first reason is for the shelf life. Uh, it's, it could go moldy over time if you're using water, and also it can break down the integrity and the viscosity of the paint. So, with Trident, they actually package their kits with what's called a reducer concentrate. So this is heavily re uh, concentrated reducer, obviously, as the name states. You cannot mix this straight into your colors. It will congeal the paint and you're gonna have all sorts of tr trouble. So this 10 mil bottle effectively will make 100 mil of usable reducer. So what you do is you get a 100 mil bottle, tip this 10 mil into that, and then fill the rest up with bottled water and that's going to give you your 100 mil of usable reducer. Same thing, they, um, they have 50 mil reducer concentrate in their kits, and they also do a two and a half, uh, 250 mil one and a one liter one. So virtually, if you just think, um, you know, 50 mil makes 500 mil, 250 mil makes two and a half liters, and one liter would make 10 liters of reducer. So it's uh, just multiplied by 10, all right? So I've already got some that I've mixed earlier. So here's some we prepared earlier. So this is um, ready to go. So I just use the reducer concentrate and um, got that ready for the video. You can also just purchase reducer ready to use from Trident as well, all right? A lot of the other brands, they use just um, reducer. They don't have the concentrate option. So you can just follow these steps and tip that in straight away. Okay, so the first ratio that I want to talk about is a one-to-one -one ratio. So this is the mix that I pretty much recommend to my students and anyone who's starting um, with the airbrush. So again, depending on brand, uh, you may also be able to use the paint straight. Like I said, I like to mix the Trident. All right, so let's just go with a one-to-one -one ratio. So this is used for general airbrushing, all right? So when I say general, you know, it's something that you want reasonable coverage, like quick coverage. If you're working on canvas, maybe t-shirt, I would run with this one-to-one -one ratio. And I usually set the pressure for this ratio at 30 to 40 PSI. All right, so you can see I've already put some paint in there. And now, I mean, you can get really technical with, you know, having a, a cup with measurements on it. I'm just doing this by eye. That's pretty close, I reckon, a little bit more. And then seal that up, give it a shake. So very important to always shake the paints with the water-based products. And we're gonna run this ratio in the Awada Eclipse. This runs a 0.35 mil needle nozzle setup and I'm gonna set the pressure to 30 PSI. You can see there, I've set it at 30 PSI, so we're ready to go with some tests using the Eclipse. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the air cap off my airbrush. So with the Awada airbrushes, you can remove that cap and spray with just the needle exposed. This allows for a bit better control and easier uh, clean of the tip drying. Just make sure you don't drop your airbrush when you remove that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead now and add some of that blue straight into the cup. Don't need a great deal, we're just uh, doing a quick test so I can show you how it sprays. Okay, so holding the airbrush with both hands, you press down for air and we're gonna pull back for paint. And you can see, as far as coverage is concerned, 
that one to one mix, the paint's moving, spraying out nice and smoothly. You can still get nice and fine detail. You can even work up close to do some dots. But the Eclipse really does handle this ratio pretty well. And it's a good ratio to start with, especially if you're a beginner, hence why I recommend this to my students. Because if it is a lot thinner, then it can spider out a lot easier. So when you're not comfortable with the airbrush, that's something that will happen. And especially um, working at this slightly higher PSI, it could um, you know, spider out a lot easier. All right, so I'll give you a demonstration. If you're up close, you pull back too quick, you can see how that spiders out quite easily. All right, but overall, if I give this a couple more coats, you'll see I get pretty good coverage pretty quickly. And it's quite easy to use. And as far as tip drying is concerned, even at this one to one ratio, there's not a huge build up of uh, paint on that needle. I mean, fair enough, we haven't done that much spraying, but that's pretty good. So the next brush that we're gonna try out is the Iwata CMSB Micron. This one runs a 0.18 mil needle nozzle setup. Now this one I use for finer detailing, obviously with the 0.18 and I'm gonna run at a 70, 30% mix for this one. So 70% reducer and 30% paint. Okay, so for this mix, I'm going to use two of the dropper bottles. Um, so I've just put some reducer in this one and we're gonna start with the uh, blue again and I'm gonna put three drops of blue in. So one, two, three. And we're gonna do seven drops of reducer. One, two, three four, five, six, seven. Okay, so you can see there's not a lot of paint there obviously, but you can just multiply that by the amount of paint that you need. So we're just gonna keep adding to it until I've got enough to pour into my Micron. So let's do another three drops of paint. One, two, three, and another seven of reducer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if you don't have these particular droppers, then by all means um, you can use something else, like just, you can buy them pretty cheaply off Amazon or eBay. But um, I'm gonna go ahead now and just continue to multiply that. So for every three drops of paint, I'm gonna add seven drops of reducer, that's our ratio, until I've got enough paint to put into the Micron and then we'll do some tests. Okay, so I think we've got enough paint there now, so let's go ahead and seal that up and give it a shake. In the end, I ended up adding um, another 30 drops of paint and 70 drops of reducer. But you can see now I've got a decent amount, so we can go ahead and add that into our Micron now and run some tests. Okay, so we're gonna tip that into the Micron now. Don't need a great deal in the cup. That's actually probably a little bit too much, but that's fine. You can see it's pretty much three quarters full. So let's get into doing some spray tests. Okay, and this mix I like to run at about 18 to 20 PSI. So let's give that a spray and see how she goes. Okay, so let's do a bit of a test spray now at that uh, mixing ratio and PSI setup. So you can see from a distance, I'm still able to get reasonable coverage. Obviously it's not as quick as the Eclipse. The Eclipse pumps out a lot more volume as well as size of stroke. And we can work up nice and close for the lines. Now, when you're running this thin, you do need the control. So it's, it's probably more advisable for someone who's been airbrushing for a little while I wouldn't really recommend this ratio for beginners. It does reduce the tip drying. However, you may need to coat over a certain section numerous times because it is running reasonably thin. You can see here, like I've got to keep moving with it and you can see how light that is. If I sit in one spot for too long, you see it runs really easily or if I pull back to too much it's quite watery so again I don't recommend this if you're new to the brush but I've had a lot of people ask me about what ratios I use 
So I thought I'd just do a quick video showcasing them. And if this is the first time watching one of our videos, then welcome. For all of our regular viewers, welcome back. Feel free to share this out, like it if you do. And let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I do two videos a week at the moment. And I do hope that you're enjoying the content that I'm uploading. Okay, so I hope those tips were helpful for you in order to get your paint mix and your PSI mix correct. Now, again, this is what I use for the paints that I use. Like if there's different brands, then just look into what reduces and what ratios people might recommend. But by all means, you're welcome to try what I've just shown you. More often than not, that should work really well when you're trying to figure out what to do with the airbrush. If for some reason you use some of these methods, and let's say for instance you've set it for the 1 to 1 ratio at a 30 to 40 psi and you're still getting it spidering out, then back off with the reducer a little bit and maybe turn the pressure down. Same thing if you've mixed up for the 70-30 um, mix and you, you're at that 18 to 20 psi but you're finding that it's spluttering out a little bit, well if you want to keep the pressure low then add a bit more reducer to the paint that will help to push it through otherwise whenever the paint sort of splatters or it's too thick then turn the pressure up so depending on what's happening with the airbrush or the paint for that matter like if it's too thick or too thin you just need to adjust accordingly so generally the rule of thumb if it's too thick turn the pressure up reduce it down more but if you want to work at that lower pressure then you really have to over thin your paint all right, so I hope these uh, tips have helped you out and by all means, check out some of the other playlists and videos that I've got listed here. Until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.